providing you with timely information and training on monthly topics of interest. This is Brendan Burnett, Director, Professional Development and Education Programs. This month, we are presenting more leads, more clients, and more sales. With me today is Annette Powell. Annette is a nationally recognized speaker, founder of the Advisor Marketing Practices at MillionaireSeries.com, one of the largest performance coaching communities for advisors and consultants in the world. She is the author of four books and numerous products and is regarded as one of the nation's leading authorities on taking a producer from average to top production with an amazing life. She has over 20 years of extensive hands-on experience advising and working with high net worth clients, business owners, and affluent women. And that has shared her message with over 100,000 advisors, small business owners, and independent professionals throughout her career. Her companies work with tens of thousands of advisors in over 40 countries. She has been published in a variety of the major financial planning magazines. Annette has a close relationship with NAFA and was the first agent inducted into the 100% Insurance Closing Club by the Hartford Life Insurance Company. Today, Annette will show you the secret to increase your income, grow your business, and have more free time. You will learn to create a model that attracts your ideal client and converts clients so you don't have to chase them. And you will learn the introductory speech that engages your ideal prospect and gets results. While most business owners fail when it comes to lead generation today, you will learn how you can avoid the fatal mistake that leads to failure. During the presentation and question and answer session, you may type your questions into the question box on the right side of your screen. Questions will be answered during the question and answer session at the end of the program. So let's begin with that. I'll turn the discussion to you. Great. Well, welcome, everyone. It's Annette Bow from the MillionaireSeries.com, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to more leads, more clients, more sales. This is actually a brand new webinar we did. We conducted major research with NIFA last year, and the one thing we found that people needed more of was, how do I get more leads in my funnel? How do I get more ideal clients? And ultimately, how do I make more sales? And so we said, well, why don't we do that as our webinar? So it's really exciting to be able to do this in conjunction with NAFA National. So many of you know me. I've written a lot of books. Million Dollar Marketing Practices is one of my best-selling, um, Million Dollar Marketing System is one of my best-selling um, systems as well as selling systems. I've written quite a few different books. And what we're going to talk about today is we're going to dive into some specifics as far as really helping you take your business and life to the next level. So the first thing I want to do is thank you so much for attending. We understand that your time is valuable, you have a choice of where to go, and I'm going to commit to you. I've literally brought about 25 to 40 hours of material down to one hour. So I'm going to give you as much as I can. I do talk a little bit fast, but I want you to leave. I don't want you to worry about everything I teach you. I want you to worry about two things. Focus on two things, two things that you can take from this conversation. I'm going to teach you everything I can about generating more leads, more clients, more sales. For some of you who want additional training, you either want more insight on this topic or additional materials so that you can create your business blueprint to generate more leads, more clients, more sales, I'm going to give you that at the end, so don't worry about it if you say, oh my gosh. But what I want you to focus in on is two takeaways. I'm going to give you a lot of million dollar nuggets ideas you can go and use today, but I want you to focus on two. And if you have to leave, just identify down in the chat your two takeaways because that put it into action. Just by your stating, this is what I'm going to do, it makes it happen. It's fascinating. So the materials, forms, and intellectual property in this course are copywritten by the millionaireseries.com. All rights and information are reserved. Before beginning any plan, you agree to consult with your own team of advisors and to review your situation. All participants agree to hold millionaireseries.com and its affiliates harmless for any results achieved or not achieved. Any reproduction of the materials allowed only with written authorization from the millionaireseries.com. All international copyrights are reserved. Now, I always joke about that. Only a CFP would have this kind of disclosure, but this is the only disclosure we have to have. So let's look at the agenda. We're going to Start talking about setting the stage, what you need to do, the mindset you need to have to get more leads, more clients, and more sales, getting from here to there, the marketing and sales process, 
more leads the formula, the process, and then more clients the process, and more sales process. So you're going to leave with a very clear understanding of the bigger picture. And what I want you to focus in on is where do you see your gaps? What is the biggest challenge in your business right now that is keeping you from where you are to where you want to be? All right, so setting the stage. The results you're getting are a direct correlation to the choices you're making and the actions you're taking. And if I said to you, I really, really want a garden, and I'm so excited. I love arugula. So any of you don't know arugula, it's a deep green vegetable. And I love it fresh from my garden. Well, this fall, we were so busy with our kids' sports, I didn't plant any. So if I said to you, I can't wait until it comes up, everyone on this call would pretty much agree. She's crazy, right? It's not going to happen. And yet in our business, we do those same things. The results you're getting today is a direct correlation to what you were doing one year ago, three years ago, five years ago, ten years ago. So the great news is, is what you change and what you do today is going to determine what you get in a year from now. And I'm going to give you some actual real life examples of what I'm talking about. So it's not, I'm not talking about theory, I'm talking about actual results. Winged actions produce winged results. If we do certain actions today and then we don't do them tomorrow, we're, we don't know really what we're going to get. And one of the biggest challenges I see, I work with a lot of NAFA people and I've had phenomenal success. We've probably had better success with NAFA than any other probably coaching or performance community out there. And the one thing I see that's very common, and it's not that it's not common with other advisors, but I do see it more with NAFA, and I think it's because of a lot of NAFA people are kind of a sole practitioner. A lot of them don't have an operation where they have support. But what happens is you get real interested in your leads because you're not, you don't have enough people in your funnel. So now your focus is all on lead generation. You then start getting all these people in your funnel and now all of a sudden you've got all these opportunities for sales and your focus shifts from the lead generation over to the sales. Now you're making all this money, but what you're not doing is you're not keeping that funnel full. And what we're going to talk about today is how can you keep the funnel full while you can increase your clients and ultimately increase your sales and, and follow that process. And it all begins with exceptional actions. We've got to take the actions that we've got to do and that's what gives us the results. I call them consistent right actions every day, day in and day out. We're either driving our business in life or we're in the passenger seat wondering who's driving it. And I will tell you, I can talk to a producer literally for about 30 minutes and sum up so clearly what's really going on. And the great news is, is that if you really are serious, you really want something different in your business, you can do it. And that's what's so exciting. Your strategy that you're doing right now, it's either producing results or it's not. And, you know, if you're getting desired results, keep doing what you're doing. I'm not here to change or convince anyone of anything. I was talking with a, a product. She does more products and she does long-term care. And she's trying to convince me about direct mail. And I said, hey, if it's producing the results, keep doing it. But it's not. But this is what we're told to do. So what I want you to do is if you've been doing something and it's not getting you results, I just for the next hour, I want you to just forget that. I want you to like have a clean slate because a lot of us who've been top producers, I've been in the business now for over 25 years, and we've been top producers, the things that were working in the 80s and 90s are no longer working. And so what we've got to do is we've got to shift how we're showing up and what we're doing. We could show up in the 90s and even in the 2000s and not even know anything, not even really you know, sporadically do it and still have results. Well, now what we're seeing is it's becoming more difficult because there's more competition, people are more educated. So, if, again, if you're getting your desired results, keep doing it. But if you're not, I encourage you to entertain the possibility of a different plan that can get you the results you want. You're either on a direct flight or a... So if I'm in California and you're in Arizona and you say, I want to meet with you, and I say, great, I can meet with you in a month. Okay, so we schedule the date. You call me up the day of the, uh, we're supposed to meet, and you say, where are you? And I'm like, well, I'm over in Africa. And you're like, well, why are you in Africa? You're supposed to be in Arizona. Well, as soon as we scheduled the meeting, I got on a boat, and I went to Hawaii, and then from Hawaii, I went to Japan, and now I'm in Africa. I'm on my way. Everyone on this call, there's very few people on this call that wouldn't say, crazy, what are you doing? Why didn't you take a direct flight? And yet, in that scenario, it's very obvious. But what about our businesses? How many people are on a boat ride? I actually had a couple, and I'm a, I'll tell you their story here. They, 
they actually weren't just not on a direct flight. They were on a sinking ship. Now, they had been decent producers, but it was just one thing after another. And the conversation I had with them is, you're either getting on a direct flight or you're going to sink. And, and it was, I mean, it was, it was a really bad situation. And I just got a call, and they said, you'll never guess what happened. I'm like, oh, I bet I will. Because I could just sense, after that first call, it's like people either get it or they don't get it. And I, it's my, my job to convince people. It's just my job to have a conversation. But you never know if somebody's going to get it or not. And I could just sense a shift. And then the second call I had with them, I could sense a major shift. And then the third call we got, guess what? We just closed a $300,000 deal. Now, did the economy change? Did the president change? Did healthcare change? No. What shifted? They shifted. They got off a sinking, sinking boat, and they got on a direct flight. And the great news is anyone on this call can do it if you're willing to do what you need to do. So there's also areas that we know we know our name, areas that we know we don't know, how to fly a jet maybe, areas that we don't know we don't know. Now, the areas that we don't know we don't know. So for instance, there are things I'm going to share with you today that you right now don't know and you don't even know you don't know. So most people focus their energy on areas they don't know they don't know. What I have found is that that's not the key to getting the results you want. The key is the areas that we know we know that we really don't know. See, the areas that we don't know we don't know, if all of a sudden I tell you, you need to go and get really clear on who that ideal client is. Not generically, but real specific. You're like, oh, that's a great idea. I'm going to go do that. But if it's something that I tell you that you already think you know, you know, that you really don't know, we have emotional attachment to that. What ends up happening is, at some level, we want it to work. And so what we do is we show up justifying it. We try to prove that it works. And if you can take one thing away from the call today, let it be that. Your key in doubling your revenue, increasing your revenue by 20, 30, 50, 100%, whatever the number is, lies in this realm. It's so huge. And what you can do is just start saying, asking yourself, am I on a direct flight? Am I on a direct flight? If the answer is yes, keep doing what you're doing. If you're not, change it. Is this an area that I'm absolutely positive works, or is it one I want to work? Just because someone else tells you something works does not mean it works. And a lot of the things out there are what I call silver bullets or gimmicks. And the problem is, is that you can get some results with a silver bullet or a gimmick, but you can't get long-term sustainable results in your business and your life. And that's what we want. We don't just want to have a 50% increase in our revenue one year and then drop back down. We want to have a consistent return and performance year after year. So then there's the areas that we know we know that we don't do. And what that does is it keeps us stuck in those low value activities. We look really busy. We're working 10 hours a day, 11 hours a day. For some of you, maybe even 12 hours a day. But we're doing very little to get to our next level. So the biggest issue is it takes away time from our high value activities. So we've got to look at that. So before we dive into content, I just want to address, and this is my, one of my favorite quotes by Winston Churchill, however beautiful the strategy, you should occasionally look at the results. Because if you're get, again, if you're getting results, keep doing it. Now the astrophes behind this are NAFA members. And actually this 30% should have, he's a NAFA member too. But these are just some examples of increases in business that I'm going to give you, just so that you can see that what I'm teaching you today, these are the results they've generated. 20% increase in revenue, 30%, 50%, 80%, even 100%. Biggest deal ever, that was also a NAFA member. $200,000 commission plus the $60,000 ongoing NAFA member. $100,000 commission, one deal. First $100,000 a month, that was a NAFA member. First $200,000 a month, and then $100,000 a month, that was a NAFA member. And then an increase in assets, 15, 25, and 50 million. Increase in referrals by 400%, that was a NAFA member. Massive referrals, 1.2, 1.4, 1.8, 3.2. He's my referral guy, the referral king. MDRT, President's Council, top producer, a variety of rewards. Losing 15, 25, 40 pounds. I have to say personal things, because sometimes these are as, as important, if not more important. Better work-life balance, maintaining your business while caring for an elderly person, improving your diet, improving your energy. So the reason I wanted to give you these is to say the bottom line is we can talk about strategy all day, but at some point we have to look at results. Okay, the belief, the problems out there. Now, this is a million-dollar nugget, and again, I'm not calling anyone out, but I want you to just say, is this you? Do you find yourself saying the problem right now is the president, the problem right now is health care, the problem right now is taxes, the problem right now is the economy, whatever it is. Because most people, 
that have a uh, huge opportunity as they see the problem is out there. So I'm going to give you a specific example. So Bo Ann, he was generating about thirty to forty thousand dollars a month. I mean, great, great business by most people's standards. He was not happy. He wanted more income without losing his work-life balance. So the first conversation I had with him, he's telling me, you know, coaching doesn't work, this stuff doesn't work. And so I'm like, well, why are you talking with me? I mean, isn't that like the first question you want to ask while you're talking with me? Well, things aren't working. He wasn't happy with where he was. So I said to him, are you willing to change? Now, I want you to write down on your little notepad, are you willing to do things differently? And if you say maybe, no, then you should keep doing what you're doing and expect the same results. But if you're willing to change and you say yes, absolutely, that's the key. Now, he said to me, absolutely. So I'm thinking, hmm. And now, he had been through literally every, he's a NASA member, he'd been through literally every coaching program. It doesn't work. Now, I always look at the common denominator. I'm like, oh, what's the common denominator here, Bo? So he's, you know, absolutely a yes. And I said, okay, really? Yep, really, for sure he's going to do it. So two weeks later, he committed to doing these A, B, and C. Well, guess what? Two weeks later, he hadn't done it. Called him up because no one in my office wanted to call him. I just called him up and I said, you know, I just want to have a conversation with you. Now, he could have said a lot of things. And I, and to be honest with you, I was a little nervous because I thought, you know, he's going to tell me to go jump in a creek. But I thought, you know, if, if I'm really helping him, i got to hold him accountable. You said, remember you said coaching doesn't work? Yeah, it doesn't. And I said, well, you told me you're going to do three things and you haven't done them. It was dead silent. You're right. You are totally right. Well, the reason I share this with you is because five months later, he had his first $200,000 a month and then his first $100,000 a month. Now, he said, you're the only person that's ever called me out and really got in my face. Now, obviously, that's dangerous. But the one thing I want you to leave with is that did the economy change? Did the president change? No, he changed. And that is the fundamental, the fundamental commonality of people who have massive increases in their business and in their revenue. And I encourage you to have the courage to do that. Because most, a lot of people would have said, you don't know, I'm busy, or they would have had excuses or whatever. He stood up. And because of that, it changed, literally transformed his business and his life. OK, getting from here to there, I'm going to give you just a little bit of insight about me. You know, I wasn't born financially free. In fact, after college, I had no money. I was broke. But at age 16, I started working for the first millionaire. He taught me the power of creating a plan and then working it. A plan that's going to generate massive leads into your funnel, clients, and then sales. And I learned the power of attracting versus chasing. Most people are in the chasers club. They're out chasing clients. If you can create an attract club where you're providing what people want, you're not trying to sell them, but you're taking the time to really find out what a person wants, you're going to have more people coming to you than you could have ever imagined. I'm not an excellent salesperson. In fact, I think I'm like a terrible salesperson. And yet I was the first agent, and to my knowledge, the only agent ever inducted into the 100% Insurance Closing Club for Hartford Life. And these weren't small cases. These were all five and six figure, the biggest one being over $600,000. But the key in that is that when you learn how to cultivate, educate, and attract your ideal client, that's when you can really see those quantum leaps in your business. And the great news is it's not rocket science, but it's not a silver bullet. It's consistent action every single day. Most advisors are out there chasing leads, chasing prospects. And what happens is that causes those people to move away. We want to attract them so that they come to us. All right, we're going to talk a lot about money. We're going to talk a lot about business, but I don't want you to forget the ultimate goal for every one of you listening is a life by design. These are my three lovely children, and as successful as I've been in business, nothing compares to my success as a mother and a wife. You know, when you create an amazing life, you can spend the summer over in Barcelona. You can go, you know, that's out in front of our home. You can go skiing when you want to ski, zip lining in Kauai. You can do what you want. And I don't tell you this to brag, but I don't want you to lose the sight of this. We're not talking about just getting all this great business and money. We're really talking about creating an amazing life. And what I love about NAFA members, and I really do love NAFA members, NAFA members have such a big heart. And what I find about the NAFA members that are struggling is that They've got this huge heart, but they get into their head. So they're like an somewhat analytical, and they're process-driven. And by teaching them how to integrate their heart and connecting with people on an emotional level while still using their brain, but integrating the two, that's where you see amazing results. So if you're somebody that knows everything about product, and you're so passionate about your product, and you want to tell everyone about your product, 
I encourage you to just connect a little more with the person on the emotional side, because people make emotional decisions. They buy based on emotions. They back it up with logic. People are assuming that you are competent. They're assuming you have the best product. They're assuming you are great and your company is great. What you've got to focus in on is connecting with that person, relating to that person, and the result will be history. You'll, you, will, you can't even imagine what you can accomplish when you make that shift. All right, let's look at the marketing and sales process. So marketing leads to sales. Sales leads to business. One without the other is a problem. So sometimes people have a problem in marketing. They don't have enough leads in their funnel. Other times people have a trouble that once they get somebody in their funnel, they have trouble selling them. Now, if you say, for instance, well, once I get somebody that's interested, see, there's different stages. Obviously, most of us have been successful. Once we get somebody in front of us that's you know, interested and they have a need and we've pointed it out, we can sell them. But what I want to focus in on is each aspect of it. Because if you're having trouble with enough leads in your funnel, that's one issue. If you're having trouble when you initially meet with somebody or getting somebody interested, that's another one. Then there's a stage from meeting with them to getting them to you know, sit down and do a fact finder, then from a fact finder to a client, and then from a client to a client for life. So there's about four or five different stages, and we've got to master each one of those. So let's look at the marketing funnel. The first thing is the foundation. Harvard did a huge study, and they said 90% of success as a service provider, a salesperson is the inner game, the foundation. The reason we added the foundation to our marketing system, our marketing funnel, is because most people wouldn't do it if it wasn't a part of that. 90% of the shifts we see where people go from, you know, that what they're making to 20% increase, 50% increase, 100% increase is the inner game. And it, it amazes me. I'm always like, what tactics did you use? I have great tactics, and it's almost always the inner game. So it's not that tactics don't matter. But you can't be doing the outer game and the tactics and the process, the selling, without the inner game. Your business blueprint, getting you in the driver's seat, who your ideal client is, your niche market, the research, really finding out everything you can about them, your one-page plan, combining it all down into one page, your inner game, your game plan, and your outer game, lead generation. We have 40 strategies. I recommend two to four. This is one of the hardest things advisors have. They want to try to do it all. How many takeaways are you supposed to have today? Two. Two takeaways. Follow-up, which is really attraction marketing, and then referrals. Your sales funnel is pre-qualifying the lead. Way too many times people go in trying to do a, what is it, like attempt close, you know, a trial close. I'm thinking like, oh my gosh. The first thing you've got to do is you've got to pre-qualify the person. And you have to have a barrier of entrance. The problem is, is when you're desperate for leads, you don't have enough people in your funnel, you get a live one and you're doing everything you can to try to get them on board. We can't do that because that is what sets us up for staying stuck and it's what sets us up for not only not achieving our goals but decreasing, going down. Meaning you know, I have a lot of people that you know, joined our program, their, in, their incomes actually decrease. And one of the big things is we've got to pre-qualify the person, we've got to sift and sort. Setting the appointment. When we're setting the appointment, we are not selling. The only thing I'm doing is setting an appointment to talk with you. I personally feel that we should never, ever have a preconceived notion of what we're going to offer the client. Because when we go in there with that preconceived notion, what happens is we, we don't ask the questions we need to. If you want to make more sales, master the questions you ask and how you ask them. Sound bites. Those are hot buttons. If you start using sound bites for your ideal client, you will have people eating out of the palm of your hand. Now, it should go without saying that I'm talking about doing this ethically and morally. And obviously, I'm doing this webinar for NAFA because NAFA does have very strict guidelines as far as what their advisors do. But I do not want people using this in a manipulative way. This is about helping people. This is about solving people's problems. And when you learn how to master what I'm teaching you along with the right Ethical and moral behavior is a dream business. Scripts and stories, what do you say, how do you say it? Having a script is so critical. Fact-finding and strategy, you want to sell more, double the amount of time you take to do fact-finding. And then the solutions and benefits, we got to focus in on the solution and the benefit. Most advisors focus in on the feature. People don't care about features, they want benefit. How is this going to benefit me? The more time you take to do the fact-finder to find out what it is that they want, what solution they need, what problem they have, 
the more benefits you can provide, the more you're going to sell. And then objections. We want to handle objections before they come up. And then the close. So that's the sales process. So now you can identify where your challenge is in marketing or sales. All right, let's look at the formula for more leads. First thing, determine your ideal number of clients. How many clients do you want? I think around 100, maybe 150 is ideal. Now, for some of you who are very low, high volume, low income for sales, you're going to have more. But ideally, 100 to 200 is ideal. Choose your ideal niche market. Who do you love working with? You've got to go do the research to find. So what you may find is that you have a bunch of clients. Maybe you have 1,000 clients. I want you to find the, first of all, the 20% that are generating 80% of your revenue. And then I want you to dive deeper and find the 5% that are generating 95% of your business. And I want you to clone those. That $1 million nugget could transform your business over the next year. Choose your lead generation strategies. We have 40. The hardest part for advisors is they want to do all 40, two to four. In fact, I'm going to share a testimony with you, the referral king, Mike, Nich Mike, no, Mike Nichen, Joel Beyer. He said the hardest thing, it took him four years to get the message, not all 40, two to four. He does two to four strategies, and he gets bigger and better referrals than literally any advisor I've ever met in my entire life. Step four, determine your ratios from open to close. How many people, how many times do you have to connect with your lead? to get appointment. How many times do you have to meet with them to do a fact finder? How many appointments do you have to have on the fact finder to get a sale? How long or what do you have to do to take them from a client to a client for life? Once we know the ratios, it becomes a plug and play. And then we have to increase or decrease our activities based on the results we're getting. And then monitor those results and then test the strategies. Okay, let's look at the process for more leads. Set our goals. Who do you want to serve? Confirm there are enough prospects in your niche. Confirm that your niche is connected. Identify what your niche market's biggest challenge and burning desires. See, some people are motivated by pain, most people, but some are motivated by pleasure. So we've got to figure out what they want and what they don't want. Confirm that your niche market wants to solve their problem and they can afford to solve it. And then you've got to choose your strategy. So let's dive a little deeper into it. setting your goals. We've got to decide what we want. That is the first step to getting what you want. And you can find that by answering a few questions. How much money do I want to earn? Just jot down on your paper. How much money are you earning now? How much money do you want to earn? And what percentage increase is that? How many clients do you want? How many weeks of vacation do you want every month, every quarter, every year? What kind of lifestyle do you want? How do you want to be remembered? All right, who do you want to serve? Who are your favorite clients? You know that feeling where you wake up in the morning, you're like, oh, you can't wait to see that person. And then for some of us, and I can remember early in my career where you had like, oh, I have that meeting, and you literally would feel sick the night before. We have to get those people out of our life. They're level one people. They're either winning, or they're either bullies or they're victims. They, are, they, are, they miss appointments. They don't value or respect us. And the problem is, is if we don't have enough people in our funnel, we feel we have to accept those people as clients. We have to rise up to our profession and say, I'm a professional, I operate as a professional, and I expect my clients to act accordingly. And if they don't, you've got to work your tail off to get enough leads in your funnel so you don't have to work with people like that. But who do you love working with? You know, when are you the happiest? Who is your natural niche market? I find it fascinating that people are either part of a a certain religion or a certain race, and yet they're not even tapping into that. Your natural niche market is a no-brainer for serving people. All right, are there enough prospects in this niche? How many people are in the niche? You can look at it locally, nationally, internationally. Is it large enough? Now, most of you guys are focusing in on locally. So you want to make sure that there are enough people for you to serve. Confirm that they're connected. You don't want them to be competitive. You want them to be collaborative. Do they meet regularly? Do they collaborate? Do they socialize, or are they competitive? Are they worried that somebody else is going to get their trade secrets? See, if they're, if they're very competitive and non-collaborative, they don't want an advisor that's working with their peers. So you've got to do the research to find that out. What are their biggest challenges and burning desires? What keeps them up at night? Now, how do you find this out? You find it out during your research questionnaire by asking them. Our research questionnaire is 13 pages long. It took me eight years to create, create another eight years to finesse. 
I will tell you, when I get done talking to a prospect, I know every single thing about them. And in fact, some of the biggest sales I've made have been because of that fact finder. People can't then go back and say, well, no, actually, I really don't care about taking care of my family. Well, you told me it was the most important thing was to make sure your family's taken care of. You told me that. Here, let me read it to you. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, yeah, that's right. Hmm, all right, let me think of another objection. Oh, actually, you told me this. <laughs> I'll tell you, you'll sell more by, by taking the time to do the research, and we're not doing it in a manipulative way. What we do is so underrated. I mean, any of you who've been in business long enough that you've seen some of the value we provide, where you have somebody die prematurely, you see their spouse okay, you see their children staying in school. I mean, it is the beyond rewarding, and it is so enlightening. And when we understand that, that's when we become unstoppable. We really see our value. Other people can see it. What do they worry about? What do they dream of? How do they want to be remembered? I guarantee you, there are not very many advisors out asking these questions. So the great news is if you learn how to ask them and you learn how to do the research, you will have more people coming to you than you've ever imagined. All right, now we've got to confirm, do they want to solve their problem? There are a lot of people out there that have financial problems, that have weight problems, and there are a lot of people that if you ask them, yeah, I want to become a multimillionaire. Yeah, I want to become in shape and have energy. But the difference is they won't do the work. And so it's not that we don't want to serve those people, but there are so many people out there that are committed and want to get to the next level. My recommendation to you is just let them be on their way. Keep in touch with them. Let them know that if at some point something changes, you're there. But don't spend your time on that. Most advisors spend way too much time trying to get a person that needs to do something but either doesn't want to or doesn't have the money to do it, trying to get them to do it. And it's just a waste of your time and energy. Do they want to solve their problems? Can they afford to? Will they pay to solve them? And then choose your strategies. Now, there's way too many strategies for us to go over, but you know some great ones. We're going to go over the million, or the, we're going to go over the brownie strategy, also known as the billion-dollar prospecting technique. We're also going to go over the relationship and referral marketing power. We're going to go over Web C Way, and we're going to go over social mania heaven. And I think there's one more we're going over. 100. Or $100 million referral strategy. So we're going to go over about four or five out of the 40. There's just no way we can go over all of them. So the first one, relationship and referral power. This is, this is huge for NAFA. In fact, Richard Eck, he started, he's like, I don't need any relationship marketing. I already get a ton of referrals, and I send out birthday cards, and I send out holiday cards, and blah, blah, blah. I said, why don't you send out anytime cards? Why don't you just let your clients know I care about you? In 18 months, he generated over $60,000 just by that one strategy. But I call it pinging, and, it's, and ideally it's automated. We actually have over 200 campaigns that we use, and our advisors use on autopilot, thinking of you, thanking people for their business for no reason. Just thank you for your business. I appreciate you. Their birthday, anniversary, the day they became your client, huge, especially for women. Shelf life, you know that picture where you're like, you took it like 20 years ago and you have like the hairdo, you're like, do you really have to still have that on your credenza? They will keep them forever. Brownie break, lead share referrals. They're all great strategies. We love referrals. So there's a lot of ones you can do that really can just connect people. And, and the ratio is this. This is a million-dollar nugget. Three relationship touches to one referral touch. Mike Nitchin was able to increase his referrals by 400% by that strategy. Three relationship touches, one referral touch. And we don't have to ask for referrals. We can thank people for referrals. Very, very powerful. All right, Web C Way. Now, I like this combined with social. Um, mania strategy. And basically what you do is you set up a word site, a website with WordPress, excuse me, um, set up a blog. You're going to write one or two posts per week. Now for some you say, oh, I can't do that. Hire somebody. I have people, I write my articles because I am real meticulous about the context. But then I have people that edit them. I don't worry. I'm giving them the concept. This is the outline. This is the concept. Now go write it, and then I, I proof it. So you can do this very little amount of money, very little effort. Then share them on your different media outlets. Probably the most important for everyone on this is LinkedIn. LinkedIn is huge. If you're not using LinkedIn, you need to be. LinkedIn is it, it's where people who have money are. It's where business owners are. So you are worried about Facebook. I'll tell you, the people that are on Facebook, 
most of them don't have very much money. They've done studies on this. And they've just got a lot of time. And then, you know, Twitter's a whole different ball game. But, you know, Google Plus can also be good. But LinkedIn is where the money is. And what do we want to do? We want to create a relationship with them. All right, the $24 billion brownie strategy. Now, this is what's so funny. We've been using this brownie strategy forever. And I heard this guy say, do you want to know how I get in front of a gentleman who's running a $24 billion company? I'm like, yeah, same thing we do. Just connect with that person and connect with the gatekeeper. What Ben Feldman used to do, just connect with the person. You know, all of a sudden, I'm calling up. She, it's like I'm her best friend. Oh, hold on. Let me get Johnny. He's in a meeting right now, but let me get him. Simple box of brownies card cost you less than 10 bucks. Very, very powerful. Now, this one I learned a very interesting way. We weren't sending a card at the time. We were sending a letter. And it was when I first started in the business. And most people complain that they send out, you know, they, they send referrals over to other advisors, CPAs, and attorneys, and they don't get enough in return. So what I thought is, well, why don't you just send one out saying, let's share referrals. So right away they know what the expectation is. What was literally the first referral we got was to a family worth $100 million. Now, I had no clue what I was doing. We didn't close the deal. And part of the reason we didn't close it is because we didn't have the wife present, something I learned, you know, always have a husband and wife present. The wives will sell 10 times more insurance than you could ever sell. And the husband is not going to say in front of you, well, she'll take care of herself. He's not going to say that if he has a brain in his head when, you, when she's there. <laughs> Trust me, I've been doing this for a long time. When she's not there, oh, she'll remarry. Oh, she'll this. Oh, she'll that. <laughs> Those things don't come out of his mouth when she's present. But what this taught me is that when we set up the expectations with those referral partners, guess what happens? They understand what the relationship is. We have an entire process for this, and it's fascinating. We actually give a couple referrals, and we sit down, and we go over every quarter who's given referrals, who's gotten them. And so, you know, it's so funny. You sit down like two quarters in a row. Okay, I've given you these two referrals, and I give you these three referrals. Oh, I currently haven't gotten any referrals from you, so is there anything I can do to support you? And if you have a process to follow up, with that person. Now, maybe they can't give you referrals because they get all their referrals from other advisors. Then they can help support some of your workshops, some of your marketing efforts. There are ways they can support you. But the issue is, is that we've got to see, again, our value, and we've got to be clear on what our expectations are. It's amazing that when we show up like that, guess what happens? All of a sudden, we get referrals. I had one advisor that I literally bought a beachfront home for him. And I thought, you know, this is really interesting. And so, I said, you know, I'm glad this relationship's working. Oh, it's working great. Well, it's not working so great for me, and I want to continue referring to you. However, it's got to be reciprocal. And guess what? I've gotten over a million dollars worth of revenue in my pocket from that referral partner just by having that conversation. Because, you know, they're happy as a clam where you're referring to them, and they're making all this money. And I was thinking, gosh, I mean, this, her life, or his lifestyle really went up. And all of a sudden, just a simple conversation, it brought it to forefront, and that was really what made all the difference in the world for getting massive referrals. Okay, let's look at more clients of process. First of all, you've got to find your passion. The most important thing is you've got to have your passion, and your passion ties into your purpose and your why. You've got to create your plan. You've got to describe your ideal client. Get really clear on who is that ideal client. We go very deep and narrow. And we're looking for the veins of gold. The power of L, we've got to make it happen. And we've got to identify those high value activities and income producing activities and remove the low value activities. And then we've got to have consequences tied to that. Now, this is the process. We don't have time to go over all of it, so I'm going to go over step two, step four, and step six. Create your plan. You've got to have an inner game, a game plan, an outer game. Most of you, in fact, it's not even most of you. This is a big statement, but I guarantee you, if you're not getting your results, you're spending way too much time on your outer game, and not enough time on your inner game or your game plan. The inner game is your foundation, your business blueprint, getting you in the driver's seat of your business and life. Your game plan is then your niche market. Who are you targeting? The research and your lead generation. The outer game is the actions and the activities that you need to complete every single day. We can't do on Tuesday what we're supposed to do on Monday. The power of L, the power of leverage. Leverage is so important. Most people on this call are thinking one-on-one. -on -one. 
one person, one person, one person, one person. We do webinars where we have 1,000 people register for the webinar. So you have 1,000 people register for the webinar. You have 400 people that take you up on your offer. You have another 200 that stay on your list. Are you concerned about the people that say no? You, you, that's not at all your focus. Your focus is on helping the people that want to be helped. I encourage every one of you on this call, if you implement the power of L in your business, you, you can't help but double your revenue because you're doubling what you're doing. The key is to determine how you can leverage your time and resources with what you're doing, your niche market, what is the easiest way to leverage that. And there are strategies that are specifically designed for that depending on who you're serving. When we go, when we, you know, most people are one-on-one. -on -one. We've got to go one on 50, one on 100. If you were in front of 50 or 100 of your ideal clients, and let's just say 10 or 20 of them raise their hand, that could literally make your year. I mean, it could make your business. But I'll tell you, if you do this one strategy, you'll have a profound impact. And then, you know, the key is, is to make more money, have more fun, and have more time. And you've got to get out of that one-on-one. -on -one. And that's what most of us were taught, one-on-one. -on -one. And when you leverage what you're doing, it just transforms everything. You have more time. You have more people to choose from. You don't have to be attached to those level one people. You can let them go on their way. It's just powerful. All right, we've got to look at the high-value activities and income-producing activities. Create our plan, and then we've got to identify what is the most important use of my time. I focus in on minutes, so I want to know Right now, right now, what's the most important thing you can be doing is paying attention to this webinar. When you get done with this webinar, what's the most important thing you can do? All right, now what's the most important thing you can do? See, way too many times people are either focused in on what they need to do later on or what they did wrong. And they're not focused the only place that can impact their business. What are you doing right now? And way too many people multitask. Multitasking is the worst thing you can do. And a lot of people have trouble focusing. Uh, we have a really great strategy for focusing. You've got to get really clear and train that muscle. There's a muscle in your brain. Just like if you wanted to exercise your stomach, you got to exercise that or your legs. Same thing on focus. Focus is a muscle in your brain. If you develop that, you will be able to focus to the point where I can be focused. And <laughs> it's embarrassing to admit my kids will be like yelling at me, you're not paying attention. I'm like, I was focused on this. I can now focus on you, but you've, you know, when I'm focused, I'm focused. Was I like that? No. I totally suffered from ADD, but we've got to develop that part of our brain. We've got to remove those low-value activities so we have the time to do what we need to. Okay, let's look at the sales process. Research. Research, as I mentioned. Our questionnaire is 13 pages long. It took me eight years to create, another eight years to finesse. Research is so critical. We find out everything in the research. Step two, altering the fault course. Step three, sifting and sorting. Get rid of those people that are not serious. Step four, the power of sound bites. Step five, handling objections before they come up. Step six, storytelling. And then step seven, closing. So we, again, we're going to cover step two, step four, and step six. So altering the fault, the fault course. So if two women are sitting next to each other at a table and one woman turns over to the woman and says, well, you sure look like you've gained a few pounds. What's the woman that's receiving the message going to do? Well, for some of you men who don't know, the first thing she's going to do is she's never, ever, ever in her entire life going to forget it, and she's never, ever, ever going to forgive her. She's got a default course, and that's where she's going. And, and all I can say is, amen, I'm with you, all you women. Now, if it, there's two guys, two buddies sitting next to each other, one says, looks over and says, well, it looks like you've put on a few pounds. The response is almost different, almost always different. He's going to go, hey, I can take you on any time, or yeah, I've been you know, watching a lot of football, you know, having a beer, whatever he may say. He's going to go a different route. See, we all have default courses. Now, why is this important? It's critical because in our business, we also have default courses. So if somebody asks a person, what do you do? So if I ask you, what do you do, what do you say? And, and please feel free to go down. We're not going to look at them right now, but go down and say, what do you say? And, and, and write it down, and, and write just specifically, what do you do? I ask you what you do, what do you do? I'm going to give you just a second to do this. This is critical. This is a huge nugget, million dollars. This might even be a billion dollar nugget. If you learn how to master how to alter a person's default course, and I know some of you have joined us. Uh, we're obviously talking about ethically doing this because this can be used. These, these strategies are very, very powerful. They're very effective. 
And the only requirement is we've got to be doing it with the best intent. We can't be doing it in a manipulative way. Most people start out with I. I or we. I blah, 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 blah. Now, if you say to me, I'm an insurance agent, I, or I'm a financial organizer, or I'm a this or that, where do I go? What is my default course? Who knows? I got to pick up my kids after school. My son's got baseball. My other son's got soccer. I'm thinking about a ton of things. I'm probably not even listening to you, right? I blah, 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 because we don't have to. I can go wherever my mind takes me because I'm going to go to my default course. Now, what happens if instead we alter that? How do we alter a person's default course? If instead, let's say you serve business owners, instead of saying I blah, 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 begin by asking a question. Do you know how most business owners want to make sure they're maximizing their resources, minimizing their taxes while spending more time doing what they love? Now, if you ask a pet person that, what are they going to say 90% of the time, 99% of the time? Yeah, if you're talking to a business owner. Now, if you're talking to an affluent woman, you're going to say, do you know how most women that go through a life transition want to make sure they make the best choices financially as well as dealing with the emotional issues so that they don't get taken advantage of, blah, 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 blah? Yeah, absolutely. See, they're going to shake their head yes, and what's going to happen is they're not going on that default course about, I've got to go pick up my kids. They've got, they can't because they have to be prepared to answer you. So if you learn how to alter a default course when it comes to the sales process, you will have people eating out of the palm of your hand. And we're, again, we're not doing this in a manipulative way. We're doing this in a way of really serving people. But our job really is to get in front of the people, to find out what their challenges are, to find out what their problems are so we can provide solutions. The only way we can do that is by adding value and really having a message that resonates with people then this is critical. I help people do that. I help people create roadmaps to do that. Now what they're going to say almost always is how do you do that? Now this is something that is a huge million dollar nugget. What you need to respond to, I'd love to show you how. Right now is not an appropriate time, but I'd love to sit down with you next week and show you how. When you're in a social environment, we do not start talking about business. We need to be in a focused, isolated environment. Way, way, way too many people that aren't producing their desired results would go into it right then thinking, oh, I might have a sale. And you've got to train yourself. That's the area that you know you know that you don't know. That is the biggest mistake. And yeah, you might make a sale, but it's nothing compared to the sale you could make by following the process of finding out the information before you ever make a recommendation. All right, the power of sound bites. Everyone has a language. They speak. I refer to them as hot buttons. Hot buttons trigger people to action. Hot buttons get your attention, they resonate with us, and they even motivate us. They're like sound bites. Examples can include risk, safety, financial freedom, peace of mind, less government, game plan. Every industry has them, less taxes. What we've got to do is we've got to figure those out. A great way to figure those out is in the research. You will hear when you start identifying, you start researching with your ideal prospect, you'll hear over and over again the same sound bites. So then what are you going to do with your message? You're going to start using those appropriately. Storytelling. People remember stories when told effectively. They love stories. Stories connect us. Stories create emotion. People make purchasing decisions based on emotion. They back them up with logic. We've got to identify the best stories we can sell. And then we've got to master and weave that into our presentation. Okay, so I'm going to give you just a few results. This is Bo Am, the guy that your little buddy that did had this first $200,000 a month, then $100,000. I'm like, it's because he's so cute. <laughs> Mike Nitchin, he had his best income month after three months, and he's had a consistent 50 to 80% increase in his revenue five years later. Huge. Not just the first year, five years later. Increased his, re his referrals by 400%. When I said what was the most important tactic, he said daily intention. It was all inner game. Todd K doubled his income first in the quarter and then in the year. Richard Eck, I talked about him, 60,000. Linda J, 200,000 fees and then an ongoing 60. Joel Beyer, the referral king. And I'll tell you, when you get your niche market and you really connect with them, amazing things can happen. I wanted to give you a few of those just so you could see. You know, everyone always talks about theory. I like to look at results. You know, every now and then, no matter how great the theory, we got to look at the results, right, or the strategy. Okay, so I committed to sharing with you. You now know what you need to do to get more leads, more clients, more sales. Some of you want additional training. Some of you are going to say, hey, I love this. How can we dive deeper into it? How can I learn everything I need to? So what we're offering today, and this is an offer only for NAFA members, 
as a business strategy session. And then when we get done with this, we'll go dive into question and answer. So if you have questions, you can go down. And if you're not interested in this, then you can just identify your two takeaways, and it was great connecting with you. But in there, we identify your biggest attraction marketing opportunities, a one to three specific step action plan so you can get more leads top producer strategies that you can implement immediately, and then additional resources. So normally the cost is $500, but we have a special offer for NAFA. Until the webinar ends, it's either $67 or $97, so you save $433. I'll give you the link in just a moment, but I want to show you what else you get. 100% money back. If you have a strategy session, you don't walk away with it with crystal clear clarity of exactly what you need to do, we give you your money back, no questions asked. But that's not all. When you purchase a strategy session, you get a few bonuses. You get the seven best selling strategies of all times, $197 value. In there, I share my cook secret cookie recipe, the strangest secret why people succeed, how to maximize your results. You also get how to stop asking for referrals and become a referral magnet so you can double or triple your referrals. You get Mark Satterfield's how to use stories to sell more and differentiate yourself. He shares so much about how people walk away saying, I want to do business with you, the best sales letter ever written. In fact, in my opinion, this is probably worth about $10,000. That is so critical. If you apply that in what you say and in what you write, it can't help but increase your business. And then Bill Case, the referral coach, he teaches you how to get referrals without asking also to help you double or triple your referrals. You also get access to our live calls where we actually do live Q&A and we actually do training. Our next one is on creating your business blueprint. So the value of all these bonuses is about $850. Um, as I mentioned, it's either $67 or $97. So you can go to millionaireseries.com forward slash BSS and enter BSS in the coupon box and then it's going to either drop to $67 or $97. And what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to, my screen's going to go blank just so I can walk you through this. And then for some of you who have questions, go ahead and type away. You've got me on the call. Now's the time to ask. Unfortunately, if you email after the uh, call, we don't um, take questions. There's just no way we can with the size of our community. But now one of the things that we have, we offer NAFA, um, just because we have such a great relationship with them, is we create with NAFA um, the opportunity that you can ask questions. So please take advantage of that. Okay, so you go in and you type in BSS, millionaireseries.com forward slash BSS. Now note, the first one, option one, which is $67, allows you to attend our monthly calls. Every month until you cancel, you'll be charged $67. If you don't want that option, you don't want to be charged $67, you can go down to option two and pay $97. But if you click here, get access now, it's going to take you to the screen where it's going to say it's $500. You're going to enter in the code BSS, and you're going to hit apply. It's going to drop to 67. Just make sure it drops to 67 or 97 before you proceed. OK, so on that note, now we're going to open up for questions. Thank you, Annette. We okay. do have our first question. Okay. Uh, actually, somewhat of an observation. Uh, the gentleman says that it sounds like you uh, are speaking about the landmark form in a way, uh, because when you talk about the I know, I know, or I know, I don't know, that that sounds similar. So I'm not sure if you have any comment on that. Well, yeah, actually I do. It's so funny you say that. I actually was, I actually attended the landmark form about six months ago, and one of the things that I thought was fascinating about that is they focus in on what you don't know you don't know, which is what that famous that famous officer focused on. But the, the difference that I don't agree with is, see, I don't think that's where your realm of possibility is. What I think it is is in the areas that you know you know that you don't know. So I, the way I view it, is, and again, it's not a right or a wrong. We just have different philosophies. They look at what you know you know, what you know you don't know, what you don't, what you know that what you know that you don't, <laughs> KN, KN, but you don't, you, you don't know you don't know. I find that, see, the area that you don't know, you don't know, you're open to change. So I don't find that's where people have major shifts. What I find is it's the areas that we know we know that we really don't know. So it's the next level. You can see the areas that you, that you know you don't know, you're open to changing. You get new information. You're like, OK, I'll do it. That's not where people get stuck in the advisory business. They get stuck in what they already think they is true but that they 
that it's not, meaning it's not, they're not getting their desired results, but they're continuing to do what they want to do. And we know from Einstein that's insanity. Once you're aware of that, then you can at least start looking at what you're doing and saying, is this working for me? So, you know, it's not that they're wrong at all. It's just that what I have found is that it's easy to change a person in the areas that they don't know they don't know. Getting a person to change what they know they know that they don't know is where the where it's more challenging, but where the quantum leaps into production lie. So hopefully that explains it. And again, you know, nothing against a landmark. It's just my experience has been different. We have two similar questions. Uh, one is asking, is the $67 or $97 per month? And the second question, quite similar, didn't quite understand the difference between the $67 and $97 okay. option. So if you could go over that in a minute. Yes. So 67 will repeat. 67 allows you to attend our monthly calls. So if you opt for the first one, the 67, every month you'll be billed 67, and every month you get to listen to our live marketing training calls. If you elect the 97, the 97 is just a one-time charge. You get a strategy session, but you don't get to access our monthly calls. Does that make sense? Thank you. Yeah. Our next question concerns, uh, Annette, your statement regarding the desirability of clients and making sure that you have the right clients in your pipeline. Uh, and you had mentioned that uh, bullies or victims uh, tend to be the clients that you don't want to have. Could you please explain further? <laughs> you know, I love, this is so funny about, especially about NAFA. So I'm speaking at your, your convention a few years ago, and um, I refer to people, and again, this is just a continuum, and it's not to, like, offend anyone where they're at, but I look at it as a continuum. There's a level three on one end and a level one on one end and a level two right in the middle. So a level one has a problem. A level three has a problem. Well, a level one's entire focus is on that problem. A level three's entire focus is on the solution to the problem. So it's not that they don't have problems. It's just where do they go? A level one is focused on a win-lose or a lose-win. So they're either a victim, lose-win, or they're a bully, a win-lose. So the problem is, is that if you're dealing with a level one person in your business, they always have to be right. They know more than you do. They make you wrong. They, you know, they either hate life insurance agents, they this, they that, because they're so stuck in their own little world of having to need to be right or a victim need to be wrong, they can't get out of it. Whereas a level three person is going to be showing up much differently. So what we want to do is we want to level twos, let's just talk about level twos for one minute. Level twos, the timing's off. So it's either the, they don't have the resources or it's just not the right timing. So what we have to do with level twos is just stay in touch with them. When you start focusing your energy on level threes, you will transform your business because level threes are people that are ready to take action. They're people that want a different result. They're people who focus in on a win-win. And the easiest way to attract level threes is for you to become one. You'd become accountable for you to focus in on the solution instead of the problem. You know, there's a lot of people that will complain. I mean, even advisors, they complain about their business, blah, blah, blah. Well, what are you doing about it? Oh, nothing. Oh, okay. Well, let me know, you know, if something changes. Same thing with people. They complain about their finances. I don't have enough money. You'll t find out. You can just, all you have to do is ask a person, how's it going? And whether it's an advisor, whether it's a client, doesn't matter. How's it going? Well, not so good. Well, what's going on? You know, we're really strapped financially. Oh, okay. Well, are you open to some ideas? Absolutely. Now, rarely will they say no, absolutely. So you tell them, OK, well, I can sit down and help you create a roadmap. I help a lot of people that are in a scenario like this look at different options. A level one will spend the next 30 to 50 minutes telling you why it won't work, all the excuses. They are, you know, their entire life is an excuse. Whereas a level three will say, wow, how do you do that? So what you want to do in your script is you, one of your biggest focuses is how can you weed out level ones. Level one people try to make you feel bad. They do. They either say things about, you know, oh, all life insurance agents are crooks. I mean, they just, they just have that mentality. And what we've got to realize is we, first of all, as I mentioned earlier, we have to see our value. No one can ever take away your value. You let people. So if you have someone who is disrespectful to you, and, and this is a million-dollar nugget, somebody that's rude to you, disrespectful to you, you do not allow that person to be in your business or your life. We have to see our value, and we have to know 
that we are a good person and that we have value to offer. And if a pr person doesn't see that, a prospect or a client, then let them go find a new advisor. Just by freeing that up and focusing in on level three clients, you can't help but double or triple your your productivity and your ultimate success. And I, you know, I could talk about that for hours. What I always love, this is what's so funny. So every time that I do a NAFO event, and I've tried, I, I'm really, as you can probably tell, into, into results, I always hear people say, I'm probably like a two and a half. I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, you know how you get that level? I'm not yet a three, but I'm definitely not a one. So don't take it personally, but if you do find that sometimes you focus in on, on the problem instead of the solution, just catch yourself. Say, wait a minute, stop. What am I focusing on right now? The solution to the fact that I'm not making enough money or the problem I'm not making enough money? And as long as you not only catch yourself but then do something about it, it's easy to shift. I mean, I, I talked about Todd Kay. I was like, that guy could have written a book on excuses. And I mean, he and I had a really tough conversation. I said, no, I'm just sick of hearing your excuses. You're paying me a lot of money. You're not doing anything you say you're going to do. I mean, it was very level one. He was so mad at me. Ten days, he said, every day he thought about me. Because see, a level one, they don't take accountability. They look at the deliverer of the message as being the bad person. So mad, so mad, blah, blah, blah. He goes, on the tenth day, I said, what if? What if anything she's saying is correct? What if? And he goes, and then all of a sudden I said, you know, why am I, why am I doing this? And then it shifted to asking the question, and then it shifted to complete accountability, and the rest is history. He had his best quarter ever, and then he had his best um, year ever. And he was already a, a good-sized producer. But see, that's the shift. Now, he could have gone either way. But the key is, is even like with Bo, Bo M, I don't give last names because we found that a lot of people were getting solicited by wholesalers when they found out their name. So we're just starting to not use last names. So Bo, same thing. He could have easily gone into the excuses of why he couldn't do it, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, well, you know, you're either serious about achieving what you say you want or you're not. And you told me you were going to do these three things. You didn't. You tell me coaching doesn't work, but it appears you're not working. He right away said, you're totally right. I take 100% accountability, responsibility. Thank you for calling me on that. He shifted, and the rest is history. So, you know, some of the shifts in might not be as quick, but the key is, is where is your focus and what are you willing to do? And I will tell you, that is an awesome question, and I'm impressed with the people that stayed on. Because whenever I start talking about level ones and level threes, <laughs> I don't know, I haven't done study on this, but I'd be kind of inclined to think that some of the people dropping off are like, I don't want to hear this. It's, it's really critical in your life, and it's critical in your business. And if you master that nugget, it can't help but transform your business and life. That's all the time we have today. Thank you, Annette, and thanks to all those who participated in today's program. To access today's presentation and other webinar archived resources, go to www.nafa.org forward slash webinars. This is Brendan Burnett for NAFA. Thank you so much.